Commentaries on the heart with Father Antonio Agnes. Today is Friday of the 19th week of ordinary time. First reading, Joshua chapter 24, verses 1 to 13. Gas reading, Matthew chapter 19, verses 3 to 12. Friends, today's first reading is from the last chapter of the book of Joshua. Uh, we almost done. I think tomorrow we shall take the last of the readings from Joshua. So the end of Joshua is coming to an end. His, his leadership, leadership role in Israel, among the Israelites. And so as a legacy, before he departs, he leaves this world, he gathers all the tribes of Israel, which means all the people of Israel, to renew what they call the covenant, for a covenant renewal at Shechem. And Shechem, which is mentioned in the reading, was the central point in the country, uh, the center of the country, so to say. So he calls all of them, their elders, their leaders, their judges, their scribes, all of them, men, women, to meet at the center of the country for him to present them this legacy. And that was indeed to give them God. And so friends, when he gathers these people before God, he now speaks to them in the words of God himself. It's important that once a while we also we knew our own covenant relationship with God. God is meeting because the great, um, um, call it the great assembly at Shechem, was to renew the covenant, and that's why it's good to always renew our own covenant, our own faithfulness to God. Every day is an opportunity to renew this faithfulness to God, and there's something beautiful in the mass, you know. The next time you go for communion, I hope you remember, the priest will say, the body of Christ. Yes, the priest could be your brother, could be your friend. He knows you. You've been coming to the same parish for how many years? But every day you come, he knows who you are, but he asks you, he says, the body of Christ. And he expects to give that password, the password that renews your relationship with God. And he respond, Amen. That amen that we say at every time we go for communion is the password to renew our subscription of God. So at every mass, we renew our spiritual subscription. You see, we have, we have subscribed to God, to have God every day. But without this password of amen, that subscription cannot be renewed. Yes, by a baptism we have saved, but just like uh, getting a mobile number, Yes, you have it for life. But for you to have the offers that come with this mobile number, you need to get some subscriptions. And so the Mass brings us this special office of God, for the grace of God. Don't stay away from Mass, my sister, my brother, my friend. Because at every Mass, you are going there to renew your spiritual subscription before God. To say, God, I need you today. Also, I need you. Have your way in my life. And so the people of Israel now, I check and renew their subscription before God at this covenant renewal. And Joshua tells them a lot. All that God has done for them from beginning to where they are now. You see, the names in that account, that uh, presentation by Joshua keeps changing. Different names are mentioned. Different places are mentioned. Different occasions are mentioned, different challenges, situations. But one thing remains. Go through the reading. It's always I sent Moses and Aaron. I brought to ancestors. I worked for them. I increased their descendants. See, the word I keeps coming, keeps coming and going. I. It remains the only constant, and I'm going a bit scientific, the only constant in that story. The eye doesn't change. When people are changing, events are changing, situations are changing, this eye is always there, the same eye. Eye, eye. Friend, this is God. He never changes. Our situations may change. Our circumstances may change. Our difficulties could change. Names changing. But he is still I, the same person. Means he is the same person who is there from the beginning to the end. Every day, Renew your own 
re-subscription re, re to God, your own relationship with God. When you're about to sleep, take time to have what they call examination of conscience. Because when we have this examination of conscience, actually, friends, we are asking God to, to be the eye of our lives, to take control of our lives. And that is why every morning, from morning to evening, you go through your day. When you wake up, the time you are before sleeping, Look for the moments that God has been good to you and thank God. It's called examination of conscience. It's good also to have time to go for retreats. We need to go back. You see, if, if you don't go back into your past and always think about what you need today, your challenge today, you might think that God is doing nothing for you or has done nothing for you. And that is typically for men eh? and women. I mean, we children, we people of today. We always think about today, now, now, now. And so we think, we forget about what God has done in the past. Joshua took them back to see the wonders of God so they don't take him for granted. And then tomorrow we shall hear the concluding story of this episode. But it's important that we go back once a while in our lives. Take some time. Go back to when you were born. Go through your day, especially when your birthday comes, and see what God has done for you. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Your blessings, you count them one by one, and you'll be surprised what the Lord has done. And so, this covenant renewal takes place with Joshua and the people of Israel. What a legacy. At the end of his life, Joshua is giving them back God. And today, God is giving back to us. Indeed, every day. In the gas reading, friends, we hear about that story about marriage, you know. Marriage is always an interesting uh, topic. Even at the time of Jesus, questions are always asked about marriage. Because it is an important topic. It's an important institution. We can't close our eyes so much. That's why today, people who, attack, who want to attack the church or attack uh, uh, God, they use marriage. Redefining marriage. One man, one woman, they are saying, no, giving a different definitions. Who now is a man? Who now is a woman? It is the only way to attack God. Of course, God cannot be attacked. But the physical presence of God on this earth, his church, so he's been attacked with this, with this institution. Friends, let's be serious and stay put to what we receive from God. Yes, they will insult us, they will call us names, they will ban us, they will say nasty things to us. But what God has, says, has said and what God says cannot be changed. He says, in the beginning God made them male and female. And then, so the two now become one, one flesh, one body. Because marriage is not just a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. Who is one body? When you say one, who are we thinking about? God. In the scriptures, the only thing that is one is God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but in one God. And so the marriage, every marriage is a miniature of God. A little God. Are you married? You are living a little God on this earth. And that's why you have to pray for married couples, to have a faith, a strength. Because sometimes, friends, it's not easy for them. It's difficult. The word is difficult. But friends, it is not going to be easy but God will be there. Remember his words, my grace is always sufficient for you. So we pray for married couples. And then if you ask, so why did Moses ask them to let sack their wives, take them away, divorce their wives? And Jesus answers beautifully, because you were difficult. Because of the pastoral situation. So today we have some pastoral situations, they call it pastoral judgment, where if a family or a marriage is becoming so difficult, they'll say, man, go your way, stay here, woman, go your way, stay there, but the marriage is not broken. Live alone, but as a wife. Live alone, but as a husband. They call it separation of marriages. It doesn't end the marriage. For pastoral reasons, we allow this, as Jesus said. But that should not become the norm, because in the beginning, he made them to be one, to be together. We pray for those who are separated. Do married because of challenges they are facing, that those challenges will be removed so they can go back to their husband, go back to their wives, to live together as one body, as one flesh, to become little gods on this earth once again. And then the disciples say, okay, if this is the case, then let us not marry up and be fine. And Jesus smiles and says, no, friend, don't use the challenges of marriage 
to say, I'm not marrying. Don't say, I want to escape from trouble. I want to be in my corner, have my peace of mind. No man, no man could disturb me. No. It just makes that clear. It is a grace. If I call to it, accept it. He will help you to manage it, even if it's difficult. And if that's not your calling to, he will help you to live your life as it is. And so we pray for those who are descending to marry, those who are looking for their married partners, that God will help them to know his will for them and to accept it. Friends, we pray for those who are preparing for marriage, going to marriage counseling, those whose marriage are, for, are fixed for tomorrow, Saturday, in the church of the world, those who marry in the course of this month, in the course of the year. We bring all these marriages and relations before God in prayer today. We want to thank you for choosing to marry, to share your life with someone, to become a little God on this planet, always pointing to the big God, the only God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for, for, for all that you continue to do for us. Yeah, Father, it's difficult sometimes to know your will for our lives. But we know that, Lord, you have not forgotten us. You are still with us, and we are in your books. We pray for the strength to know what you want for us and to accept them. We pray for married couples who are going through challenges, and those also who need encouragement, Lord. We pray for the young ones deciding on their faith in terms of marriage, Help them to choose and choose well. Those men and women who become one with them, to become you on this earth. Father, we pray that as Joshua and the people of Israel did, may you always choose you and make you the center of our lives. Thank you, Father, for making us your children. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.